I love my morning routine so much, I call it the million dollar morning. Because it is in fact the morning routine that makes me feel like a million bucks, it gives me laser focus, it helps me make progress, and it is the structure and foundation upon which I chip away at my goals and I stay consistent and I have built the business and continue to build the business that I have built. That life that you envision, you're capable of achieving it. You can do the work to make that version of yourself a reality, but it's not gonna happen out of thin air. You gotta put in the work. And I personally believe that that work begins first thing in the morning, that every single morning you can wake up and experience a clean slate. You can wake up and you can create a morning routine. Not that the you right now likes, but the morning routine that the future you needs. And the bottom line is, whether you consider yourself to be a morning person or not, a morning routine is essential. Need motivation? You better watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because in my first business, I quit on my business partner. I struggled to keep going. I was making 300 bucks a month and felt like a complete failure. And the thing that saved me, that pulled me up, was studying the stories of famous entrepreneurs. I got the motivation from them. I also got the strategies of what to do next so that I can go off and achieve my dreams. And quite honestly, I still need the stories today myself to continue my motivation to take it to the next level. So today let's learn from one of the best, Mel Robbins, and my take on our top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. A morning routine is like the first domino. Let's just agree that every single day of your life, you wake up and you have the opportunity to create a new experience in your life. And that first series of decisions that you make, which are basically your morning routine, it's like the beginning domino that falls. And if your morning routine sucks, like my morning routine used to suck, the first domino that falls in your day is procrastination, stress, anxiety, depression, suckiness. And that tends to trigger a whole lot more of that. Now, let's talk about the other option. Have you ever had a morning where you rolled out of bed because you had to be somewhere? You actually met a friend at the gym and the exercise class was not only not that bad, it was kind of fun. And you felt really energized and proud of yourself for going. And you were set up for the meeting that you had. You were prepared. What's it like when that domino falls? It feels good, doesn't it? It makes you feel confident and alive and proud of yourself. It kind of creates this energy and this motion in your life. And that brings me to a simple statement. The solution to almost all the problems in your life is your morning routine. If you were to get serious about creating a morning routine that makes you feel like a million bucks, that sets you up with the structure and momentum and positive choices that act like a domino, that send you into your day feeling like you have started the day off with a bang, checking the right boxes, getting it done, feeling proud, putting yourself first. Imagine how the rest of your day flows. You see, how you set your day up is how it ends up. I'll say it again. How you set your day up is how it ends up. And if you are serious about making more money or making change stick or getting things done or just feeling happier or finally learning how to put yourself on the list, let's get laser focused on your morning routine. Because when you get laser focused on your morning routine and setting yourself up for success from the get-go, it's pretty amazing what flows from there. Rule number two is use anchor thoughts. What is an anchor thought? An anchor thought is a extremely powerful and proven way for you to take control of what you're thinking about when your mind starts to spiral. And an anchor thought is any thought that makes you excited happy, think positive emotions here. Um, I'm going to give you examples. Don't worry. 
Um, an anchor thought is something that you have predetermined and planned in advance that you're going to go to in your mind and picture. This is like a form of visualization in a situation where normally you feel anxiety. And you're going to use this practice of having a predetermined anchor thought in situations that make you nervous or anxious to go to as a method to anchor yourself down, to calm down your body, and to take control of what you're thinking about in situations that normally make you anxious. The way that I started using anchor thoughts in order to change the way that I thought and felt on a plane is this. I would think about before I got on a plane, I would think about something that I was excited to do once I got to the place that I was flying to. So for example, tomorrow I am flying to Vegas and I'm going to think about a particular restaurant that I love in Vegas And I'm going to think about what I'm going to order when I get to that restaurant. And I'm going to think about how delicious it's going to taste. And this person, my friend Mo, that I'm going to see. And so I've got my anchor thought, which makes me happy and excited, what I'm going to do when I get to Vegas. And when I get on that plane, and if I start to get nervous and my stomach starts to rumble and my body starts to feel anxious and my thoughts start to spiral, I immediately start saying to myself, I am so excited to get to Vegas and to go to that restaurant and to see my friend Mo and notice I'm closing my eyes because I'm visualizing it. And I'm visualizing how happy I'm gonna be when I see her and that very specific positive, excited, happy visualization of what I'm going to do when I get to Vegas, it settles my body, having that in my mind. It focuses my mind on something positive. And I, by using an anchor thought to weigh me down in terms of weigh down what I'm thinking about and, um, direct my body sensations to be positive. Rule number three is get up and get moving. I woke up this morning and I was feeling really anxious. And what that means for me is the second that I wake up, my heart is racing and I start feeling like something's wrong. And I know this feeling because I've had anxiety for decades. It doesn't come around that much anymore, but when it does, oof, takes me right back. So I wanted to just grab the phone and show you what I do when I wake up feeling anxious. First of all, rule number one, do not, under any circumstances, lay in bed if you wake up and you feel anxious about something. You have got to use the five second rule, five, four, three, two, one, get up, get out of bed, Get moving, because if you can get up, you can get going. If you can get going, you can get dressed. If you can get dressed, you can move your body. If you can move your body, you can then move your emotions. If you can move your emotions, you can then move your mind. If you can move your mind, you can move your mood. So one thing leads to another. Number one, get up. Rule number four is change your mindset. What is a mindset? Well, your mindset is your beliefs and your opinions about the way that the world works. That's the definition when you look it up. However, you know that I prefer metaphors. Mel Robbins is dyslexic, so she likes to be able to visualize something, especially when we're talking about this intellectual stuff, okay? So the metaphor that I love when it comes to mindset and the sciencey, psychological, neurological aspect of mindset and brain programming is I use the metaphor sunglasses. I think about your mindset like a pair of sunglasses. So stop and think right now about your favorite pair of sunglasses. Now I want you to think about the lens color and think about how when you put on that pair of sunglasses, that lens on your favorite sunglasses, it colors and filters what you see and it gives it a tint, right? I mean, if you put on rose-colored sunglasses, the world has a rosy, bright tint to it. 
If you put on amber sunglasses, same thing. Gray, same thing. My big black bug-eyed glasses that I just love. I feel so glamorous in these $15 plastic things. Everything looks crazy dark. Just really blocks everything out. Your mindset works the same way as a pair of sunglasses. Let's go back to the written definition of your mindset. Your mindset is made up of your beliefs and your opinions. And just like the lens on a pair of sunglasses, those beliefs and opinions that you have, they create a mindset through which you filter the world. Your mindset determines the way you view the world, and that determines how you think. So I want to do a gut check right now with you. If you had to tell the truth, or actually, let's make this really accurate. If your best friend had to describe the color of the sunglasses that you wear, would they say that you're more on the lane of the dark, bug-eyed, plastic glasses that just skewed everything like it was midnight? Or are you more on the range of everything's rosy? You're always positive. You are always upbeat. You see beauty where most people see nothing. Do a quick gut check with yourself because your mindset is critical. It shapes the way you view the world. And that determines how and what you think about. It also determines how you feel about the present moment, about your past, and about the future. And most importantly, this is where it gets really important. Your mindset determines what actions you take and what actions you don't take. And it also impacts how you see other people. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five is eliminate self-doubt. How can I get started on my dreams and make them a reality? Where do I start, Mel? There's so much self-doubt. It's overwhelming. And I just don't know where to begin. Once somebody knows what they want to change or why they want to change it, the next big question is how. And so I'm going to answer Jessica's question in two parts because there are two parts to how. The first part is easy. It's the doing part. And how you get started when it comes to taking action and you don't know what to, quote, do, this is easy. Just go to Google. I'm, I'm dead serious about this. Google has the answer to everything. If you simply go to Google or go to YouTube and type in the change you want to make or the goal that you have or the thing that you want to create in your life, you will probably get 6.3 million search results. And every single one of the links that you click on will give you a long list of things that you could probably do. And I'm not being a smart ass here. The fact is, the steps that you need to take action-wise are super simple. The reason why you're stuck is because of the second part of her question. Now, did you notice she said at the very end, my self-doubt, my self-doubt, because one of the reasons why you get stuck is because of the doubt. And this is where working on your dreams and your goals gets really tricky. Because if your own mindset is working against you, you're actually never going to feel inspired or motivated or encouraged to take the actions that that Google result just told you to take. And so we got to focus on your mindset first and foremost when it comes to where do I start? Because I want to play this out with you. Let's just role play here. If you're sitting there going... I would love to become an opera singer, but I don't know, but self-doubt, but what if I sound stupid, but this, but that, but what if Uncle Willie's... If you start doubting your ability to make that happen, how motivated do you feel? If you're sitting there telling yourself that you can't do it or that it's not going to work, 
This is the reason why most people never even get started on their goals and dreams. Their thinking pattern is the problem because their self-doubt, their perfectionism, their lack of self-worth, it's convincing you not to take the action. Rule number six is do the five-second rule. What is the five-second rule? It's a form of metacognition that gives you immediate control over your thoughts and actions. Using the rule is so simple. The moment you feel your instincts fire up, just start counting backwards to yourself to switch the gears in your mind. Five, four, three, two, one. Then give yourself a push forward. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> counting backwards requires focus. And when you focus, your prefrontal cortex awakens. And by the way, that's the part of the brain that helps you learn new positive behavior patterns. I first mentioned the rule in its head talk. Since then, more than eight million people have discovered the rule through that talk and its powerful countdown trick to take control of their lives, become more confident, happy, and even make their dreams come true. Now first, let's talk a little bit about productivity as a concept. Productivity is not about blasting through your to-do list and doing more. It's actually about doing less. Productivity is the ability to make progress on the things that matter to you. It sounds simple, right? I mean, just move the ball down the field on the important stuff. But it's not easy. Why? Blame your feelings. You see, you're capable of being more productive. You're just waiting to feel like doing what you need to do. And guess what? You're never gonna crack the whip on yourself when you have a million other things that you need to do and you got people that are making demands on you. One thing that you must understand is that you have the power to decide what's important. And productivity actually boils down to simple five second decisions. Here's one that you need to start making immediately that will have a tremendous impact on your ability to be productive. When the alarm goes off, do you wake up early to work on your business or do you blow it off because you don't feel like it, you're tired? Or do you stick to the plan to finish some important tasks or do you mainline Facebook instead because ah, you'd just rather relax? When you change your decisions, you'll change everything because productivity boils down to the ability to make small five second decisions that put the things that are important first. And here's one five second decision that will make you more productive than any other. Get up 30 minutes earlier than you normally do and push yourself to work on the most important priorities first. This isn't just me. Research shows that your most productive hours are the first two to three hours after you wake up and get ready. This means that for peak productivity, you've got to do whatever you can do to make sure the most important work to you gets done first during that window of time. So here's how you're going to use the rule. The moment your alarm goes off and you want to hit the snooze button, use the rule. Five, four, three, two, one, push yourself out of bed. Then use the rule again, five, four, three, two, one. Sit down and get working on the things that matter to you instead of checking your phone, instead of letting your day get hijacked. You see, the moment you feel yourself wanting to give in to distraction, you're gonna use the rule again, five, four, three, two, one, do a search control and get back on task to the things that matter to you. It doesn't really matter how busy you are, we're all busy. If you really care, you'll find the time. And that's how you're gonna use the rule, to find the time to work on things that matter to you. Rule number seven is take on challenges. If you feel stuck right now, if you feel like you're in a rut, if you just got dumped or fired or you're going through a divorce or you put on more weight than you've ever had or you're just feeling kind of lost in life, you have no clue what you wanna do, here's a tip from your friend Mel Robbins. If you don't know what to do in that situation, Sign up for something challenging. Train for a marathon. Commit to doing something that feels hard as hell and that pushes you outside of your comfort zone. Something that forces you to add something new to your life, like a training run every single day or a class where you're going to learn something or a meditation challenge or, hell, 75 harder. How about this one? If you don't know how to swim and you're an adult, it'd be pretty confronting to go to your local Y and sign up for an adult beginner swim class and learn how to swim, which is a life-saving skill. Or maybe you want to sign up for tango lessons and you've always thought about how fun it would be to dance in competitions. See, what's interesting about a challenge of something scary and hard is it forces you to level up every area of your life 
because you won't be successful adding this challenge into your life and completing the goal if you don't change your life and your habits and the systems of your day-to-day life in order to be a person who can achieve this goal. It literally shocks you to your core when you sign up for a challenge. And it reminds you, I'm more powerful than I think. I'm not stuck in this situation or this relationship or this dead end job. I'm more powerful than I think. And just trying this online challenge or training for this marathon or this, you know, road race or this walking thing or whatever, it's getting me back in touch with me. Rule number eight is create a vision board. For 25 years, uh, I've had a head full of ideas. I've had half-assed projects and lots of plans. Uh, I chose always wishing over doing. Uh, Many of uh, my blocks were due to fear, many just basic survival. Uh, The idea of goal setting, it really fires me up. Uh, The idea of remembering to revisit those goals, that freaks me out. I just think of all the things that I should have done and uh, want to do still um, that I, again, I've thought about over the last 25 years. What do you have a vision board for? That seems like, what are you, a child? Let me tell you why vision boards can be important with one huge caveat based on science. Vision boards are important because when you take the time to create a vision board, which is basically bringing your dream or your goal to life by creating a collage of images, what you're doing is you are grabbing that dream or that goal that typically we bounce around in the back of our minds in private. You're pulling it out of your mind and you are grounding it in reality. And one of the reasons why this can be so powerful is because it signals to your brain that this is really important to you. We've talked in previous episodes about the Zygarnik effect. It creates this kind of to-do list in your mind. The other reason why it's important is because when you put a vision board in a place where you can see it, it keeps these goals and dreams front and center, which is really important. But here's the problem. Everybody puts the wrong on their vision boards. You've been sold a bill of goods. You have been told that if you simply create a collage of some beach house or your dream body or a million dollars in the bank or a Maserati, that suddenly the universe is going to hand you those things. That's not how that works. What research shows is exactly what Rochelle is talking about. If all you ever do is think about the big thing, You think about the end goal, the beach house, the Maserati, the thing that's like 10 years from now. And then you create this beautiful collage of this amazing thing that you want. That's a huge mistake. And see, everybody makes this mistake. If you look at anybody's vision board, you know what's on it? It's beach houses and a million dollars and a Maserati and the the finishing line at the New York City Marathon and all the things that you hope and dream for. And the reason why that's a huge mistake is that if the only thing that is on your vision board is the thing that's going to take you 10 years to get done, as you sit here in your studio apartment or in the spare bedroom of your parents' house at a desk in the corner and you stare at a $10 million beach house, oh my God, that is going to feel so far away. It's going to feel like You might as well move to Mars for crying out loud. Instead of that vision board keeping your dreams front and center, that vision board is rubbing them in your face. It's not motivating at all. Why? Because you start to become present day in and day out to how far away you are from that dream of yours. And that starts to make you feel less motivated. It doesn't surprise me at all that Rochelle has been thinking about all kinds of things for 25 years, and yet she can't get started. And the reason why is because she is making the mistake of visualizing the end. Rule number nine is learn to heal yourself. I believe that in some way your life or the last three years or the uncertainty that you have come through or the issues in your life that you have survived have left the light switch on, your nervous system is in a state of alert, that annoying light bulb is blinking in the background, and it's time to turn it off. And so we're going to turn it off using the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve runs from your seat 
all the way through your body, through every major organ, through your vocal cords, and all the way up to the top of your head. And the technical term, when you flip the switch, is you're, quote, toning the vagus nerve. That's what researchers and neuroscientists say. I just say, let's just flip the switch. Let's just use the vagus nerve. And there's lots of ways that you can do this. So the vagus nerve, when you hum, hmm, when you sing, I think one of the reasons why so many of us love singing, whether you're singing in a religious ceremony or you're singing with friends or you're singing in the car as you're driving, you don't realize this, but in addition to just music's awesome, is that when you are singing, you are flipping the switch on the vagus nerve in your vocal cords. Another way you can do this, take a warm bath. Just go soak in a tub. It's amazing. I love doing that. Absolutely love doing that. And another way that you can do this, you see this all over the internet, cold exposure therapy. Now, I have a tub that I climb into. I hate it. Absolutely hate it. But this has been transformational because when you put yourself in a situation, whether you're jumping into a lake or you're sitting in a cold bathtub or whatever, standing in a cold shower, just end your shower with 30 seconds of cold water. It sucks. And what you're doing is you're exposing your body to a situation where your nervous system turns on. The lights go on, baby, when you climb into 34 degree water and it freaks out. And then you calm yourself down by breathing. And you are training yourself that even in situations where I get triggered, even in situations that are awful, like 34 degree water that I'm sitting in, I have the power to flip this switch and calm my ass down, breathe through it, and know that I'm going to be okay. That's a freaking superpower. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, are you me, Mel Robbins? You're telling me to deal with trauma by taking a freaking bath? You're telling me that I can handle Abuse from childhood and poverty and all this crap that I've had to like deal with my, losing my spouse and by taking a cold shit. What is wrong with you, woman? Yeah, I am telling you that because this is not about the shower. This is not about the bath. This is about you and your nervous system. This is about you training yourself that you have the power to be okay no matter what's going on around you, that you are bigger than the things that you survived. That, yeah, by standing in a shower, you're training yourself for confidence, for the capacity to to feel something and get triggered and not let it hijack your life. That's what this is about. And when you do that, you take that new you into your life. You take a person who has the capacity to have go sideways in your life and not get hijacked by it. You become the kind of person that could have survived horrendous trauma and be able to heal yourself over time. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips, is practice proper manifestation. Manifesting is intentionally training your brain and your nervous system to believe in something that hasn't happened yet. That's what manifesting is. Manifesting is a power tool. It's backed by neuroscience. It is backed by years of research. And when used properly, it helps you achieve your goals because it helps you prepare to do the work. I use science-backed manifesting tools every single day to shut down the negative conversations in my life and to live a big life and to take big risks. And dude, Olympic athletes use manifesting. And we're going to get into how Olympic athletes and the world's leading you know, business leaders and successful people everywhere use it. But I'm telling you right now, the way you shut down your internal conversation that is holding you back is manifesting. Manifesting is one of the first things you have to learn how to do to get started on making this a reality. So what is manifesting? Manifesting is 
mentally training for getting what you want. That's all that it is. It is part of the toolkit that successful people around the world use. Let me tell you what manifesting is not. Manifesting is not thinking thoughts and then hoping they come through. That is what people do on their seventh birthday and they blow out the candles. That is not what we are doing here. Manifesting is based in neuroscience. It is a tool that you are going to use precisely, intentionally, systematically, with purpose. Because you use manifesting to rewire your mind and your body and your spirit to help you do the work to achieve your dreams. When you use manifesting properly, you are removing the mental obstacles of self-doubt, resistance, fear, perfectionism, feeling overwhelmed, other people's expectations, all that stuff that is holding you in place right now that makes you spin in circles. Manifesting clears that shit out and it programs using science a completely different way of thinking and feeling about the things that you want to create in your life. And when you manifest properly, it's almost like the pregame training that you do before the big game. It prepares you to take action. It boosts your confidence. It gets you ready to do that thing. You are in control of the one thing that everybody cares about, that everybody complains about, and everybody is trying to steal from you, and that is your time. And in fact, if you're worried about not having enough time, let me tell you something that I know about you. You're not using your time effectively. You're not being deliberate about how you're spending your time. And the problem isn't time and whether or not you have enough of it. The problem is you're not being completely selfish, deliberate, and just in control of how you're spending it. You're letting other people distract you. You're letting your negative beliefs distract you. And so that's got to stop today. Because here's the truth. Whether you're 70 or you're 77, you have plenty of time to start working toward the things that you care about. One of the things that I wear right now is my little My Intent bracelet, this little thing. And my word for the year is deliberate. And when it comes to time, you have to be deliberate because you have plenty of time. It's a matter of whether or not you're being deliberate about how you're using it. And that's the thing that you have to stop. You got to stop giving your time away. You got to stop wasting your time with people you don't care about. You got to stop wasting time listening to the, the excuses from the past. They don't apply. You can make anything happen if you just start putting in the work. And that's going to require you to get deliberate about making the time to do the work. And you can do the work that you need to do to change your life 10 minutes a day. That's it. Start working 10 minutes a day. Start taking an online course. Start investigating going back to school. Start following people that inspire you around launching your own business. You have time. So stop with the habit of telling yourself you don't. If you want to get work done, you have to manage distractions and interruptions. So the tech stuff is easy. Put your computer or your phone on do not disturb so that you can get work done. That's number one. Number two, if it's interruptions from family members, um, what the heck? Put a sign on your door. Do not disturb unless you are on fire or uh, I'll be available in an hour unless it's an emergency. When we first started quarantining, my kids were so anxious and discombobulated, they would come in to my office at home every 10 minutes. Mom, how do I cook microwave popcorn? Mom, uh, how much food do I feed the dog? Mom, um, uh, is someone going to the grocery? Mom, can I? And you know what they were doing? A lot of times when people interrupt you, they're managing their own anxiety, boredom, procrastination by coming to interrupt you. They're creating reasons to interrupt their own work or their own emotional state by coming and interrupting you. That's what I realized was happening. Everybody was all discombobulated. We're underneath one roof. 
People are bored, frustrated, procrastinating, feeling anxious. And so what do you do if you can't sit still and you don't want to do what you're doing? You get up and you can't drive to a coffee shop and you can't go run an errand and you can't go do something. So you go interrupt somebody. So I'm not kidding when I tell you, put a sign on the door. The other thing that you should do that is super helpful, I know this sounds terrible, but it works like a charm. On Sunday night, have a family meeting. Go over the week. Outline all of the things that you have coming up. And then you've got to take it a step further. I've been doing a tremendous number of virtual presentations for companies all over the world. And whenever I'm streaming online for a paid client, it's not enough to have previewed this for my family on Sunday. That takes care of who's picking people up and what needs to happen on Tuesday when I'm giving the presentation. But when I'm in the middle of it, nobody's going to remember that mom was not supposed to be interrupted. So you know what I do? I text everybody in our family group chat in all caps. I'm about to go online for a paid client. Do not call me. Do not. I will not pick up from 2 o'clock to 3.30. Thank you. I love you. And that has worked like a charm. You should hang something on the door. And you can have uh, a sign that says you may enter. And then you should have a sign that says you may not. And then put a sticky note as to when you're going to be available again. That way, you are training somebody to stop and think before they walk in. You're training somebody to go, is this actually important before they come to you? In terms of everything else, it's on you to hit the do not disturb. It's on you to send calls to voicemail. It's on you to turn off the notifications because you simply can't work if those things are happening. You've got to manage the interruptions and distractions, period. The barrier is everybody gives a mm -hmm. what other people are thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're on camera or they're on a microphone trying to be smart or concerned about whether or not they look good in the shot, uh, concerned about uh, how they sound, whether or not they stuttered, if their neck is turning red, like whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And they're so up here that they're not actually being true to just saying what's right here. Absolutely. Whether you're speaking from the heart, speaking from the gut, like that is the skill to develop is the ability to be more like an 11 year old that gets on camera and can just be themselves instead of being a 49 year old person censoring themselves. Got it. And that's what I'm talking about when I talk about the truth, when I talk about authenticity, that people really want to feel that connection. Mm -hmm. And the only way that they're going to feel that connection is if you do the work to remove the own veneer and the own barriers that you put in between you and other people. And the number one thing is everybody gives too much of a sh about what everybody else thinks. Absolutely. And you know who they think the mo they're the worried the most about? Their friends. Yeah. If I put this thing up, not for my friends, but for the people that I'm trying to build a rapport with online, my friends are going to judge me. F your friends. Seriously. If you're out to make a difference, if you're out to share something that is important to you, if your friends don't like it or don't support you, they're really not your friends. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. No, that makes total sense. And it's a really hard lesson. It's a very hard lesson because everybody's always judging everybody else. That's yeah. why you can't worry about it. Do you have like recommendations for how people just get started like from moving from that, like to basically move from their mindset of I care too much to I don't care as much? Like, are there steps that you recommend people the take? The only step that really works is action. Okay. Because if you're stopping to think yeah. about what people are thinking or whether or not you're worried about what people are thinking, you've already fallen into the trap. The second that you push yourself to get started mm -hmm. through the action itself, you are proving to yourself that even though you care what everybody thinks, you're going to do it anyway. Okay. And Absolutely. so that's why I talk about the five second rule. The yeah. five second rule is how you interrupt the excuses, the patterns, the concerns, and the fears that you have, whether it's perfectionism, mm -hmm. whether it's disappointing your parents, whether it's being judged by your friends, whether it's looking stupid when you post something, whether it's screwing up and saying something that a bunch of trolls come after you for, right? All those things that everybody's concerned about, that can stop you forever. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If you go five, four, three, two, one, you break the part of the brain where all of those trappings are, okay. and you awaken your prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that you're using when you're creating content, when you're speaking with courage, when you're learning something new.
And so that's why this simple brain trick that I invented is exploding around the world, because every last one of us is exactly the same. Exactly the same. You and I, mm -hmm. we want the same thing. We want to actually live a life where we get to express ourselves Absolutely. at the highest level. Mm -hmm. We all want the, the same thing, and we're all stopping ourselves the same way, by thinking too much, by buying into the lies that self-doubt tells you. And so I'm here to tell you, you can cut that off at the knees. Five, four, three, two, one, you can make a five-second decision. The second you feel that doubt, the second you feel that concern, the second you feel that, fr that fear, and you can literally feel it and actually move anyway. Close your eyes and think about the next year of your life. What do you want the next year of your life to look like? Begin by making a wish. That's how I began two years ago. Yep, my business was upside down, kids were in shambles, my husband was struggling with depression, and I was struggling with everything. I had to create a break from that moment of pain and allow myself to see something different. At the time, I had no idea what the new chapter of my life would be or could be. Here's what I did know. I don't wanna stay in this one. And that's all you need to know. All you need to know is you don't want to stay in the place that you're in right now. That right there is a wish for something better. If you know what you don't want, it's very easy to change. As soon as you start removing or letting go of things that aren't working, you'll see all new possibilities. No matter how you feel, start taking the actions that align with what you want in your life. Stop making the mistake of waiting to feel happy or motivated before you take action. The secret, it's taking action first. Because if you can get moving, you can keep moving. And research shows that just a little boost in your mood impacts your productivity for the rest of the day. It impacts your focus. It gives you a little uptick in energy. Taking actions that align with the bigger vision and the future you, it taps into this huge body of research called behavioral activation therapy. Now, you're going to learn a tremendous amount about this therapy modality in future episodes of the Mel Robbins podcast, but here's how I'd summarize it for you. Act like the person you want to become in the future, no matter how you feel in the present moment. Look, I know it sounds simple. Act like the future you. But this is grounded in decades of research, and it works. This is how I've made every single change in my life. Once I figure out what I want to do or the kind of person I want to become, I figure out someone else in the world that's doing it, and I just reverse engineer it. And that's how you create a brick path that leads from where you are right now to where that wish of yours wants to take you. And every morning, wake up, take one action that aligns with what you want or the person that you want to become. And you can consider that action, it represents one brick. And if you keep doing that day by day, brick by brick, action by action, you're going to look up a year from now and you'll realize, oh my God, I just paved a brick path leading to my dreams. What the heck? Most of the shit that we react to is some sort of response to a past experience. And that it's not until you have a wake-up call from somebody like Tom Bilyeu, or you see somebody that has been in your circumstance uh, that has overcome it, or somebody says something that challenges what's been programmed up here, that's the wake-up call. And that's when you realize, oh, wait a minute. All of this that I just naturally believe, like for example, I didn't have, I didn't, like, you know, I didn't choose to speak English. That's what was spoken in my house, so I absorbed it. If you grew up with a hypercritical parent or a narcissistic leaning parent, you probably absorbed certain things from them that you don't want now that you're an adult. Yeah, right? I wouldn't even say probably, that's a you guarantee. Did. Yes, and so I just wanted to be very clear because one of the things that prevents people from changing their lives is when you said the thing about what's missing, I was gonna say hope. Because without hope that things could change or that this new action or thought matters, you won't do it. And so if you have this moment where you immediately get this wake up call that maybe I don't have to be miserable, maybe I don't have to criticize myself, maybe I don't have to live with anxiety for the rest of my life, maybe I could be the first one to go to college, maybe I could like live as an openly gay or trans person even if my family rejects me. Like there's that wake up call moment that is critical, but now what you're up against is completely learning how to reprogram all that default that somebody else put there. And that's the work that you're up to. 
that's the work that I'm doing for myself. And I did it at a certain level uh, up until the last two years. Like I've been chipping away at this at all different kinds of levels. And I think the more self-aware you become and the more successful that you become in achieving goals or taking away a lot of the stressors that you know are no joke, like paying your bills, the deeper the opportunity to attack the deeper, which is what I've been working on. The reason why visualization and picturing yourself succeeding and allowing yourself to feel the happiness and the pride that comes with picturing a positive future, the reason why that's as important is let's say Shelly does that every single day this week. Every day she wakes up, she walks for five minutes, and as she's walking on that treadmill, she's visualizing herself finishing a 10K in six months and how proud she is. Every time she does that, she is changing what's going on up here. This isn't something I made up. This is true. And it's not only true based on science, but let's think about this from a common sense perspective. If Shelly wakes up or if you wake up every single morning and instead of thinking about the worst case, instead of looking at your body in the mirror and going, I'm so fat, I'm so out of shape, I'll never run a 10K, this is never going to happen, why didn't I exercise last year, I hate my flabby stomach, I hate my, my big thighs, I hate how out of shape, I'm embarrassed to go, like, I'm, if that's what you're thinking, then that is what you're allowing your brain to continue to filter the world through. If you start teaching yourself the skill of visualizing a positive outcome and feeling the pride that comes with achieving that positive goal, what happens for you right now is you start to think like the kind of person that does a 10K. If after an entire week, what Shelly does is she get, looks in the mirror and she goes, I'm getting stronger every day. I'm really proud of myself. Even though I'm, I'm feeling flabby, I'm not saying you're flabby, Shelly, but even though I'm feeling flabby, I'm doing the work. I can do this. What happens a week from now is when she sees a registration for a 10K, the old mind that wasn't programmed correctly would go, oh, you're fat, you're out of shape, you're not prepared for that, don't sign up. But the new mind, because she's been visualizing every single day, the new mind just seven to 10 days later is going to go, oh, wait a minute, I'm in shape, I'm proud, I'm doing this, why don't you sign up? It's going to filter the world in a very different way because you're training it to. This is the heart of doing a mindset reset. And this is why visualization works and why it's an important step and why I'm so glad you're doing it. When you have a limiting belief, so that default network in your mind is programmed to think you're not enough, or the default network in your mind is programmed to think it never works out for me, or the default network in your mind is programmed to say, I'm never going to make it. What happens with a limiting belief is that you actively, because of the default network in your brain, is your brain is actively filtering in and out information that agrees with the limiting belief. And so your whole mind is set up to view the world and look for evidence that you're not enough, that things aren't working out, that you're never going to make it. So there's a big difference between the reality that you're food compromised, the reality that you're unemployed, the reality that you're living with depression, the reality that you're divorced, the reality that uh, you dropped out of school and you want to go back and now study to become a nurse. Those are harsh or can be harsh realities. It can be liberating realities for some people, not everybody, of course, because those are very, very real and tough circumstances, okay, to be food deprived. I don't mean to say that that's a liberating circumstance. I meant it from the dropping out and going back to school. So let me be clear. Very harsh reality to be food compromised. Very harsh reality to be unemployed. <clears throat> very harsh reality to live with depression. Very harsh reality to get dumped. Very harsh reality to have a diagnosis that's terrifying. Get it. I totally get it. That is very different than having the harsh reality be your brain and you've got a terrible diagnosis and all your brain is doing is saying, I'm going to die. I'm never going to survive this. My chances are ba 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 You got it? So that you're making it worse because of your default settings. Um, I want to train you regardless of the harsh circumstances that you're living in. 
that you get to choose how you view the circumstances. You get to choose how you view the future. You get to choose whether or not you see nothing but problems, nothing but excuses, nothing but reasons to be depressed and sad and to check out, or whether you can train yourself to still have hope, to still get up and try, to still get up and be positive, to still get up and look for opportunities to make your life just a little bit better. That's the difference between harsh realities and your limiting beliefs. Harsh realities are temporary. You can change them. Limiting beliefs will keep you stuck in a permanent mental state because you are continuing to look for evidence to make negative beliefs true. And that's why we want to turn you into a deliberate thinker. When you wake up, generally what the research shows is that your brain is primed to be able to focus for the first four hours of the day. The first four hours of the day tend to be, for most of us, the time of day when your brain has the most fuel and when your speed of processing is awesome and when you are able to direct your attention at what you need. There's a caveat to this. You can manufacture boosts of productivity and boosts of feeling like you've got a little bit more brain power. Number one, immediately after you exercise. So if you have a burst of cardio, 30 minutes is what a lot of the research says. But if you have a burst of cardio, you will get a little bit of increase in fuel. But generally speaking, everybody, you need to start to marry mornings with peak productivity. If you can own your mornings, if you can put that thing that matters to you first thing in the morning and make a little bit of progress on it, you are going to start to feel like you are more in control. You're going to start to see yourself using your best brain power and your highest level of fuel at the thing that matters most to you. In fact, I was just talking with um, my creative director and she was sharing with me that a friend of hers is going through this terrible thing right now. It's not terrible. It's just, a, it's just what happens in life where um, she knows that the relationship that she's in isn't right. They get along really well. Things are really easy. But in her heart, she knows it just isn't right. Those are the kinds of decisions that are really difficult to make. And so it gets to the heart of Emily's question, which is, how do I know whether to make a decision with my head or a decision with my heart? I'm the kind of person that believes you should always make decisions with your heart and soul. You can use your brain for math. You can use your brain to look at the uh, fine print in a contract. But when it comes to the actual feel of the decision, you always want to go inward and check it against your heart and soul. How do you do that? Here's the simple test. Does the decision that you're about to make expand you, expand your future, or expand the possibilities of your life? If the answer is yes, then the decision is yes, no matter how terrifying it is. If you conversely look at the choice that you have to make and the decision will shrink you, will silence you, will inhibit you in some way, then the answer is no. No matter how easy the decision is, no matter how safe the decision is, the answer is no. Now, one of the things I wanna point out that when you start to use this, does it expand or does it shrink me? Does it open possibilities or does it keep things closed? Does it raise my voice or does it silence me, right? Is that there's always a short-term and a long-term impact to the decision. The short-term impact to making an expansive decision, a decision that's based in your heart and your soul, sometimes it's terrifying because sometimes it means moving or it means changing a job or changing a relationship or having a difficult conversation or starting something new. And those sorts of things are always uncomfortable. So brace for impact, put the force fields up, but make the decision anyway. Because the long-term impact of making a decision from your heart and soul, that is where the best life comes from. Because you're living for what's true for you, not what's safe in the moment. The only advice that's going to work is, vice, is advice that you flex to work in your life. And so one of the reasons why I'm constantly sharing these really simple things to do 
is because that's the only things that I can fit into my life. My life is very complicated, just like yours. And so I can't fit in two hours of exercise, but I can fit in 15 minutes. I can't fit in training for a marathon right now, but I can get a walk in three days a week. And so what you're going to find is that if you hold yourself to an impossible standard, you're going to feel like that standard is impossible. If you become not only realistic about the demands of your life, but you also become very rigorous about what you demand of yourself in terms of, you know, I'm not going to force myself to some ridiculous standard. I got two toddlers. I'm a single parent. It's not safe for me to walk alone outside and leave them. I just can't do it. So what can I do? And so when you say, so that's, so that's just hopefully getting rid of like the, the kind of comparison thing. Cause I do it too. You know, I often have this conversation with Christine, who's our chief operating officer of 143 Studios, which is our production company. And she's also my sister-in-law. And I love her because I'm like the flighty, creative ball dropper, genius type person, right? I call myself a genius, like in jest, but I'm creatively fruity all over the place, just flying high. She is a CFO, Excel spreadsheet, get everything in the columns kind of lady. Mel says yes, Christine says no. That's basically the joke inside the company. Mel said yes, but Christine said no. So anyway, I was complaining to her the other day because, um, of course, like you, I bash myself when I see other people out achieving me because I've got to win some imaginary competition here in life. And I see a friend of mine who is going on a book tour. And he is going on a book tour that is lasting three months. And I turned to Christine. I'm like, this is unbelievable. It's so cool. Da, 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 da. And she turned to me and she goes, he doesn't have children. You can't be on the road that long, Mel. Like, it's not going to work for you. And I'm like, oh, that's right. She's like, you got to stop comparing yourself to people whose lives don't look like yours. You will never be able to achieve what somebody who is a single male can achieve because you've got other demands on your time right now. You will never be able to achieve what a 23-year-old can do right now because you've got aging parents and three kids and a business to run. And so please, please stop making yourself feel like because you are looking at somebody who has totally different life circumstances than you. And by the way, this does not mean that there's something wrong with a 23-year-old fitness influencer. I think that's freaking fantastic that somebody's doing that with their life. There's nothing wrong with somebody who is going on a book tour for three months. I think that's fantastic. And there's clearly a part of me that wants to do more of that. But at the moment, <clears throat> I got to face reality. And the reality is, based on my values, based on what life looks like right now, I'm not going to do that. But what I can do is figure out what advice I respond to, what changes I want to make, and then I can fit that into my life. Give yourself permission to dream with the lid off. This is really important. And the reason why this is important is because I guarantee you that right now you are not even allowing yourself to fully dream or think about or set goals that are truly aligned with what you deeply want in your heart that you aren't even able to manifest properly because you're not even honest with yourself about what you actually want. This is a really common thing because you're allowing your self-doubt, you are allowing your fears, your anxiety, your insecurity, you're allowing where you are to dictate and limit where you wanna go. And so step one, super important, you must allow yourself give yourself permission to start dreaming with the lid off. Now, the scientific reason why this is so important is because you have a filter in your brain called the reticular activity system. I write about the RAS for short, the reticular activity system, extensively in the High Five Habit. The RAS is a filter in your mind, and you can do simple things that change the structure of that filter. In fact, the filter in your mind, the RAS, is always changing. So one thing that you can do in order to teach yourself how to 
dream with the lid off, is to adopt a simple habit. Every single morning, I do a very simple thing. I write down five things that I want. That's it. When I start my day, after I get up when the alarm rings, I make my bed, I pull on my exercise clothes, I set an intention, I high five myself in the mirror, I then go out into the kitchen, I crack open my high five journal, and then inside the journal there are prompts that walk me through the steps of visualizing. And the first prompt is dream with the lid off. Set your spirit free. Write down five things every morning that you want. And this is important because when you get what you want out of your head and you physically put them on a piece of paper, research shows that you're 42% more likely to achieve those goals simply by writing them down. That's pretty cool. Secondly, your mind is paying attention. And when you take deliberate action and you write down what you want, you are signaling to your brain that you deserve to have these things. You are signaling to your brain that you do want those things. You're not just gonna think about them. These are things that matter to you. And that helps train your mind to allow you to let the desires flow through you. Because right now, you're not manifesting properly because you're not even allowing yourself to dream with the lid off. So that's step number one. You're gonna start writing down five things that you want every single morning as a way to train your mind to let you dream freely. In making powerful change in your life, find the proof that you can do it. It's all around you. You just need to look for it. Find anyone that has the life that you want or that has made the change that you want to make. The relationship, the career, the body, the family, the friend group. Anytime you see someone who has already made the change you want to make in your life, tell yourself, there's proof. It exists. Use people as evidence that, yes, you can have what you wish for, too, if you're willing to work for it. See people as a light on the path to your future self. For years, that was not me. I was the opposite. I did not see other people as lights on my path. I saw people as robbing me of the lights that I wanted. I had this really stingy, jealous, and insecure attitude. If a friend of mine was renovating their kitchen, I would smile that tight smile that people have when they're faking a smile. And I'd go, oh, it's so pretty. I love the white cabinets. But inside, I was seething with jealousy. And the reason why is because I believed that somebody else's happiness or success somehow was robbing me of mine. It's the opposite. Their beautiful kitchen means if I can work for it, I can have one too. Their amazing relationships means I can create it too. Their success or the business they've built means it's possible for you too. This alone, if you just do this third step, this one mindset flip, it is a complete game changer. Here's how you do it. There is unlimited success, happiness, and fulfillment in the world. You're not in competition with anyone. The only one that can rob you of the success, happiness, and fulfillment that you deserve is you and your excuses and fears and sitting around waiting to feel motivated. We're going to stop that today. Correct? Good. I'm glad you're listening because we're not doing that anymore. You're not going to wait six years to get started. You are going to start taking actions that align with what you want now. And when you see other people as evidence of what's possible for you, as you start seeing them not as extinguishing your light, but lighting the path that you're now walking on, holy cow, talk about throwing gasoline on that internal fire of yours. And by the way, don't you ever forget, you are a light on the path for someone else. And you don't even realize it. So think about that for a second. You are just a step or two ahead of someone else. I mean, if you've grieved the loss of a loved one, if you've changed your career, if you've survived heartache, if you've sold a family home, if you've reinvented some aspect of your life, if you've lost weight, if you're able to live with depression, if you were the first in your family to graduate from college, your life experience proves to someone else that it's possible for them too. So you better make sure that as you start chipping away at your own wishes and goals, that you hold that light up a little bit higher for everybody that's behind you.
Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. For 10 more amazing rules from Gabby Bernstein, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Your presence is your power. If you wanna live in that life of flow, if you want to attract that partner, if you want to get that book out into the world, if you want to make more money, if you want to